Hello students, welcome to another video session on uh, circular motion. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, question eight. Um, it's going to be the eighth uh, practice question that we will work out together on circular motion. Right, so, um, so yeah, in this question, so the hope is you've gone through the question as, as usual, you understand what the question is asking so that uh, we just try to, to see how best we can work it out together. So in this case, we have, um, if we take, uh, they're describing a person who is held stationary in a rotating drum against the wall by static frictional forces um, exerted on him by the wall as shown. So um, what, what, let's look at this person as, as an object. So if we looked at, at, at the person as an object, what we should, what we should observe is, um, the person is, if this is the wall, uh, the person experiences some force, uh, a number of forces. The first step is to visualize all the forces that are acting on, on this person. Like that, it becomes easy to, to know how to find whatever we're looking for. So there's going to be uh, the weight. Uh, the easiest force to, to point out is the weight of the person which is going down. Now, since the person really is not going down, the question says he's held stationary. It then means that there must be another force that is balancing out with the, uh, the weight. And that's the frictional force holding the person stationary. Now, apart from this, the second force that we have to observe is, there has to be a force that is uh, acting in this direction. Since if we look at the question, uh, the drum is rotating uh, counterclockwise. So if it is rotating, then the person is also rotating with the drum. Now, if he is rotating with the drum, then we're saying there has to be a force that acts uh, um, on him towards the center. And that, if you recall, that has to be the centripetal force. Now, the easiest way um, that we can look at it, um, let's, start, let's start in the y-axis. Since we're saying the person is neither moving up or down, then means that uh, the force going up, which is FF, uh, minus the force going down in G, the two forces must be equal to, um, to zero. So from here, we see that force of friction is equal to, uh, to MG. Now, after coming up with this equation, the question becomes, what is force of friction? To look at this one, we have to look at um, what happens in, in, the, in the other dimension, in the x-axis. So in the x-axis, we see that we have a force that is going um, towards the center. So the drum exerts a force that goes towards the center. This acts as our normal force. Now, if maybe you're having trouble visualizing that, think about this if it was on a horizontal surface. Then it would mean that in this case, for this object, we have a force that is going to the left. So let's call it mg. And then we have another force that is going this side opposing the first force. And then we are calling this force, force of friction. And then we have one force that is going up. Now this force is the normal force. But in this case, it is going towards the center. So this force becomes the force, the centripetal force. Now, the key thing was to, Notice that this is a normal force. Now, this being a normal force, it can help us to find the friction. How? So you recall that the coefficient of static friction is a ratio between the force of friction and the force normal. So from here, we notice that the force of friction is equal to mu times the force normal. But from our diagram, we did point out to say that the force normal is actually equal to the centripetal force. So this expression now becomes force of friction is equal to mu centripetal force. So now when we get this and substitute it into equation one, what happens is now we end up with mu, the left-hand side mu centripetal force equal to mg. Now we want to find mu. So this becomes mu is equal to mg over centripetal force. But we remember our expression for centripetal force. Um, we did look at, we've been using it uh, uh, so many times, you should know it by now. 
it is m vt squared over r. So when you substitute it in our expression, let's call it in our equation three. So if we substitute this, uh, what we see is now we have mu is equals to uh, mg over, this is m vt squared over r. The masses cancel out and then mu now becomes equal to g over, we can change, you can do it stepwise. So it's g multiplying, we want to change the division, the, the multiplication into, the division into multiplication. So this becomes r over vt squared. So this now is mu is equals to gr over vt squared, okay? So now we have our expression for, for mu. The remaining thing is just to substitute. But what is our question giving us? So if we go back to our question to see what we're given. So we're given the angular velocity and then apart from that, the radius of our uh, circle of rotation, 2.5. So R is 2.5. And our angular velocity omega is 0 0.6 revolutions per second. But what we need is VT. So to get VT, we, we are going to use VT tangential velocity is equals to R omega. But it, for this to work, the omega has to be in radians per second. So we need to convert that uh, 6, 0 0.6 revolutions per second to radians per second. How do we do that? Of course, we've seen so many times how to convert that. So if you're still having trouble, I'll advise you to go back to the introduction video and see how that works. But in simple terms, we just have to multiply this by, um, in every revolution, we have two pi radians. So when we multiply this, we get the angular velocity as 3.77 rands uh, per second rands per second. Okay, so let's just write that uh, better. So that is uh, 3.77 rands per second. Okay, so now we can substitute. Oh, yeah, we can substitute in this equation. So Vt is equals to, um, anyway, we, we, can, we can just get this equation and substitute it here so that we can simplify this a little bit. Mu is equals to g r over, this becomes r omega squared, and then this becomes g r over r squared omega squared. The r's cancel out. We remain with, we remain with mu is equals to g over r omega squared, okay. So our r again is, uh, that's 2.5 meters. And then our omega, we did work it out and we found 3.77 rads per second. So when you substitute this, uh, g is, is 9.8 over r 2.5, multiplying omega 3.77 squared. So when you multiply this and round off uh, correctly, you should be able to get 0 0.28 as our coefficient of static friction. So if we go back to the question, this is exactly what they were looking for. So that is, um, yeah, so yes, this is the one that they were looking for, 0 0.28. Um, yeah, so again, it has no units. Don't, uh, I hope you remember the coefficient of static friction has no units. It's just a ratio. All right, so this was just a short video uh, showing you how to work out this particular problem. So I hope you found it helpful. If you did, if you, if you did find it helpful, just uh, leave a like. And if you don't want to miss any of my future videos, just subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that uh, you'll be alerted every time when I upload a new video. We're going to have more, about one or two more practice questions before we move on to look at the moment of initial. All right, we'll see you next time.